remember, how you train is going to come out in your fight, all right? Good, good round. Let's go. Come on. For this kind of thing, something that's just my dream, you know, I don't want to call it a one-outer. I don't want to think of it that way. And even if it is a one-outer, you know, this is what I've decided to do, and I'm just going to work as hard as I can to make it a reality. In the poker world, Terrence Chan is a specialist. Hailed as one of the very best heads-up limit hold'em players on the planet, he's been traveling the world and making money in that niche for the better part of a decade. In fact, Terence was so dominant in that form of poker that there aren't many people left who will even take him on. But a couple years ago, Terence decided to give up playing cards professionally to focus on something new. And right now, he's getting ready to enter a world where there's no shortage of opponents looking for action. Kenzo Gracie says, like, fighting is the greatest thing a man can have in his soul. Even though it's maybe physically unhealthy to take, like, a lot of blows to the face, it's in a way very spiritually healthy, and, and it, it really just teaches you a lot about yourself. I think these punches are going to turn into top soon. Nice transition by Terence Chan, going from triangle to armbar to finish with the top in the second round. For the winner by submission due to armbar, Terence Chan! In the MMA world, I'm, I definitely know where I stand on the totem pole, and it's near the bottom. You know, I'm the runt. I'm, the, I'm a small guy. In addition to just not having the, the skill and the athleticism of a lot of guys that I train with or that I've trained with in other gyms, and so just that fact alone means I get beat up a little bit more often. In the gym, you know, some days it's, it's a lot of fun and some days it's really tough and some days you wish you want to quit, but, you know, you put yourself through all those weeks and weeks of, of misery and then you just have this one culminating moment where everything you've done has coalesced into this great thing. And uh, that's like a really wonderful feeling to really just build up towards that goal. It's something we don't really have in poker because you can work as hard as you can, but it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to win the tournament or the final table that you've managed to get to. I met Terrence in, I want to say 1998. We were uh, all a bunch of local guys who were playing 10-20 limit hold'em at a casino over here called the Holiday Inn and we were all sort of cutting our teeth at the same time playing this uh, limit hold'em game that was really good. There was four or five tables every night and, and here's this uh, you know, tiny little scrawny kid comes walking in one day and sits down and, and uh, jumps into our game and, you know, right from the get-go was, was a real solid player. Yeah, the poker world was really different back then. In, in 1999, you could still smoke in the casino, so I would go play at a four-hour session and, you know, come back and I'd want to burn my clothes and shave off all my hair because everything reeked of smoke. And you just had all these characters, and I was by far the youngest person playing. I mean, I was playing underage. It was pretty evident quickly that Terrence wasn't a gambler. He wasn't there to, uh, you know, try and get his gamble fix, and he was there to win money, period. I remember we used to play in this home game at a, at a friend of ours house here in Vancouver once a week and uh, he came in one day saying that he was, looks like he might be moving to Costa Rica to go work for PokerStars and, and you knew right away that PokerStars made a great decision there. Yeah, it was really fun being a part of PokerStars and, and watching it grow and I remember the first time PokerStars had like 10,000 uh, simultaneous players. I was in the office in Costa Rica and I kind of printed out the screenshot and everybody was really proud. and. You know, all, all these kind of moments, like when Chris Moneymaker won the World Series, we all kind of stayed late, you know, stayed until like after midnight watching Chris Moneymaker on the live stream of the World Series. And, and all these things are were, were really cool. Um, I really do enjoy and miss kind of the, the startup, uh, you know, aspect of things, kind of being part of, of a team in that way. Yeah.
Yeah, I was uh, working at Poker Stars, but I was, you know, on my off hours, I was playing party poker sit and goes, and those were really easy to beat back in the day, so I was making, you know, really high hourly compared to my salary at Stars, which was good. Leaving Poker Stars and, and starting to play poker for a living wasn't really scary because I was pretty confident in my ability to make a living as a poker player. A lot of my friends had gotten into playing poker for a living and they got to travel and they got to do all this fun stuff. So it wasn't literally a monetary decision, it was just a, a lifestyle decision. You know, I wanted to travel. I, I'd barely traveled at the time despite the fact that I was living in another country. And I, I wanted to do all that kind of fun stuff and not be beholden to the regular nine to five. Uh, I think there are a lot of parallels between uh, being a heads-up specialist in poker and being a good fighter. He's got such an advantage on somebody coming in that, that doesn't have that background because you're constantly looking for you know, leaks in the other person's game or mistakes that this guy's making, even if it's a little mistake. You know, if this guy's leaving his arm open, uh, as in Terrence's last fight where the guy left his arm open and grabbed it and boom, they were, it was done in a minute. When I was probably about like 27 or 28, I kind of thought, oh, I'd, like to, I'd like to do one fight before I'm 30. You know, I'm in the gym every day, I'm training hard, I'm working hard, but you never really know that much about yourself until you're actually locked in there with another guy who wants to cause you harm. Terrence definitely has the, the competitive drive. I usually roll with him at least uh, twice a week and uh, doesn't like it when he loses. Let's just leave it at that. The good thing with Terrence is if he does get caught in something, you know, not only is he right back at it, but he wants to know, what did I do wrong? How did you get it? Why am I tired and you're not? I've, I feel like I have a ton of work to like make the major leagues and make the UFC and that kind of thing. And, and that's a distant goal, but I mean, I always, when I started playing poker, I never really thought I would be a high limit player either. So, you know, maybe you just kind of have to, to dream big and just, hope that the unexpected things can kind of happen. Is this something you really want to do? And you know, I've decided, yeah, this is something I love to do. And, and that's, that's all the motivation I need.